subscribe now and press the bell icon never miss an update KNPC 10 golden rule 1 follow instruction and signs 2 if you don't understand ask 3 Report all accidents and any dangerous conditions or acts. 4. Keep your work area tidy. 5. Use the right tools and equipment for the job. 6. Don't do anything without right permit. 7. Wear the right protective equipment for the job you are doing. 8. If you feel unsafe, stop the job. 9. Lift with your knees not your back. Get help for heavy lifts. 10. Watch out for each other. Seems elements. 1. Leadership, commitment and accountability. 2. Management system, metrics and audits. 3. Safe work practices, permits and standards. 4. Training and competence. 5. Environment. 6. Information and documentation. 7. Contractors and material procurement. 8. Roles responsibilities and assignments. 9. Behavior. 10. Occupational health. 11. Emergency preparedness. 12. Incident reporting and investigation. 13. Risk assessment and management of change. 14. Mechanical and operational integrity. Critical task. In coordinate with Superintendent of Contracts, contractors shall identify all critical tasks in the scope of their contract with company including the conduct of risk assessment to identify hazards associated with such work. The contractor must develop 1. Procedure for safe performance of these tasks. 2. Prepare competency training matrix and submit for company approval at the initiation of contract. Three. The approved critical task procedure shall be translated to work group languages as practicable. Work permit system. Before starting any job in an area, it must be ensured that it is safe to work in the enjoyment as well as with the machinery, equipments involved. In order to ensure that no work has to start before ascertaining the safe conditions, work permit system is being followed. AIM. The purpose of the work permit system is to ensure that 1. Only authorized persons are allowed to work in hazardous area which is clearly notified. 2. The person permitted for work are being aware of the various safety issues involved and knows that necessary safety precautions have been taken. 3. Work permit is legal documents between issuer and executor for commencement of job inside refinery. Four. KNPC has implemented the work permit system to distribute the equal responsibilities of job being performed. 5. So don't do anything without proper work permit. Work not requiring the permit. 1. Routine work in established workshop and adjacent yard with boundaries. 2. Routine material handling work in warehouses and lay down area. 3. Routine office work. 4. Visual inspection or checking without using any tools in operation area of verbal permission from assist custodians. 5. Work carried out by operation employees as their daily start up and shut down of plant. 6. Work carried out in designated area which is declared as work permit free by KNPC safety. 7. Any work approved by KNPC safety on special request by contractor. Types of work permits and authorizations. 1. Cold work permit, green color, is required for any job which does not involve or use of any source of ignitions, spark, and fire. 2. Hot work permit, red color, is required for any job which involves or use of source of ignition, spark, and fire. 3. Confined space entry authorization, yellow color is required to enter into the confined space. 4. Excavation authorization is associated with permit for excavation job, 
which having validity of one month and can be renewed for three months at least three days before expiry. 5. Work Permit Risk Assessment, Safety Certificate and Electrical Isolation Tag shall be required as applicable. Feature of Work Permit Form The work permit consists of four copies. 1. Original marked, displayed at site. 2. First copy marked, field operator copy. 3. Second copy marked, safety copy. 4. Third copy marked, issuer copy. Critical work. All cold and hot work with medium or high level of risk as defined in company procedure for incident investigation and reporting, all confined space entry job are considered as critical. These activities have potential of 1. Immediate danger to life and health, death, loss day case. 2. Damage to company asset or property. 3. Significant effect on environment by means of toxic releases, pollutions. Issuer and executor responsibilities. Please read the Safe Work Practices on Work Permit System.7.2 and 8.2. Gas Test for Work Permit, Section 4A. Gas tests are required for hot work and confined space entry. It may also be required for cold work and excavation job. 1. An authorized gas tester, who has been approved by KNPC Safety and Holding Valid Certification Card can do gas test using approved gas monitor. 2. He shall check the meter in fresh air and keep it on before actual use. 3. Combustible gas can be measured as L should be 1 for hot work and 10 for cold work. 4. At least 13% oxygen is required for accurate reading from uncombustible gas monitor. Work Permit Risk Assessments All activities have an element of risk that has to be managed. In refinery operation and maintenance, the risks are many, high in both probability and consequences, unless adequately managed. Managing these risks by adopting and employing work permit risk Assessment methods are therefore the essence of controlling loss. This can be done by Following steps, identify the hazard. 1. Assess the risk. 2. Put controls, safeguards in place. 3. Reassess the risk with control in place. 4. Confirmation of reduced risk. Hazard. A condition of potential of accidental loss. Risk. A measure of how likely and how serious an accident can be. It comprises of two components. 1. Likelihood What are the chances of it happening? 2. Severity If it did happen how badly it would be. Who will do it? People who control or carry out job on site, they shall thoroughly and firmly trained in all aspect of work permit risk assessment and be able to demonstrate full understanding and practical knowledge. 1. Team led by Area Section Head, Senior Engineer. 2. Area Safety Engineer. 3. Concern Job Engineer. 4. Shift Supervisor and any other engineer if necessary. When it is to be done. It shall be done before start of the job. How it is to be done. It is done by using simple matrix chart of likelihood versus severity. The purpose of assessment is, after identifying the risk level, take measure to reduce or remove the risk level to an acceptable level care by 1. Employing control, safeguard. 2. Doing the job in different ways. To start the process, one must know the job, then identify the hazards, decide likelihood and severity, and see what the risk level it shows on the matrix chart. If it's too high, not acceptable that is caution, alert and alarm, one then decides what one can do to reduce it, mitigation. Then try with the matrix again. If it's reduced to acceptable level, care, then the risk assessment is completed. See the matrix and process flow diagram. Risk assessment shall be documented and be retained for future use. If it is being used again, it must be reviewed to ensure that nothing about the job has changed.
and it is still relevant. One must apply following actions at each level. Care, one can proceed with the job. Caution consult your supervisor for advice, reassess if require. Put additional controls to bring down level to care. Alert stop, advise supervisor, who should consult his superiors. Alarm stop, this is too dangerous, it needs to be fully reassessed. Work permit risk assessment process flow chart. Hazards, causes, likelihood, severity, risk, risk. Mitigations, residual risk. Conclusion. Work permit risk assessment is all about evaluations of risk associated with particular job. The risks are evaluated without control in place and subsequently with control in place. The idea is to reduce the risk up to care by applying the controls, which is acceptable level of risk to carry out the job. Incident Investigation and Reporting System AIM All incidents are reported and investigated to find out route cause and to develop an action plan to prevent recurrence. Purpose The purpose of the incident investigation and reporting system is lesson must be learned and appropriate corrective actions shall be taken to prevent its recurrence. Thus the objective are 1. All incidents which have the potential to harm people, assets, environments or company image have been properly notified, reported and investigated. 2. Corrective action shall be taken to prevent further recurrence. 3. Lesson learned are literally communicated to all. 4. Effectiveness of system can be audited and measured. Definitions Event Possible incident that could result if a threat should release hazard. Hazard. The energy in the system, potential, kinetic, toxic etc., that has a potential to cause injury or illness to people or harm the environment, should it be released. Accidents. An accident is an incident, which has caused harm, loss. Incidents. An incident is an unplanned event or chain of events, which has, or could have caused injury or illness and or damage, loss, to people, assets, the environment, or reputation. It includes accident and near miss. Unsafe act. It's a human error or a person mistake by which there is a chance of accident or property loss. Unsafe conditions. It is the condition by which there has a chance of getting accidents and property losses. Near miss. A near miss is an incident which resulted in no injury, illness, damage, product loss or harm to the company reputation. First aid case. Any one-time treatment and subsequent observation of minor scratches, cuts, burns, splinters, etc., which do not ordinarily require medical care by a physician. Medical treatment case. A medical treatment case is any reportable injury or occupational illness that involves neither lost workdays nor restricted workdays but which requires treatment by a physician. Restricted work day case. Because of work injury or occupational illness which prevents the employee from going his normal duty or working for full shift. An employer can do part of the job or all the job part of the day. Lost work day case. Because of work injury or occupational illness employee death has happened or person not able to work furthermore comes under lost work day case. Lost time injury. Any work-related injury or occupational illness which renders person temporary unable to perform any regular job for one or more day after the incident. Incident Investigation Procedure 1. Proceed to incident scene immediately and initiate action to bring the incident under control. 2. Writing board, measuring tape, camera, scale shall bring while coming for investigation. 3. Advise the supervisor to barricade and secure the scene including protection it from weather. 4. Ensure medical treatment for injured and if more serious send him to clinic. 5. Inform to ECCC and superior. 6. Take action to ensure the safety of the other people at the same end to avoid any further escalation of the incident. 7. Collect physical evidence, data records and take photo for report. 8. 
conduct initial interviews of key witness and collect witness statements. 9. Check the activity in progress and equipment if involved. 10. Work permit and other document. 11. Position of personnel and equipments. 12. Time and weather conditions. Personal protective equipment, PPE, managed nets. In order to attain the expected degree of protection, PPE must be worn and it should be clean and maintained in good conditions. Only KNPC approved PPE shall used at site. It does not eliminate hazards but is an aid in controlling individual exposure to prevent injury or adverse health effect. Types of PPE 1. Safety helmet 2. Goggles 3. Coverall, normal and disposable 4. Safety shoes 5. Mask, dust, cartridge and canister 6. Hand gloves, rubber, cotton leather and welding gloves 7 earplugs and muffs 8 safety harness 9 apron 10 face shield normal and welding 11 blasting hood 12 scuba self-contained breathing apparatus 13 scuba self-contained underwater breathing apparatus 14 escape set SCABA A self-contained breathing apparatus consists of compressed air cylinder, full face piece, air supply hose, pressure regulator, pressure gauge, low pressure alarm. SCABA offer complete respiratory protection usually for 30 minutes in any toxic or oxygen deficient atmosphere. Regulator shall be pressure demand type, which maintains slightly positive pressure to avoid contamination air leaking from face piece. SCABA shall be used in firefighting and IDLH atmosphere. One hearing low pressure beep alarm, person using SCABA shall immediately leave the contaminated atmosphere to fresh air. SCABA shall be properly maintained, stored and inspected regularly. Escape VA set. It is the short duration version of SCABA, which is able to provide full respiratory protection for 10 minutes to enable escape from a hazardous atmosphere. Excavation. It is defined as ground breaking or making trench in ground is called as excavation. Cave in, the separation of mass of soil or rock material from the side of excavation, or the loss of soil from under a trench shield. Excavation authorization is required to identify and safeguard underground facilities such as pipelines and cable, etc. It is required for excavation deep more than half meter. After checking the drawing, site conditions and the effect on existing underground facilities. 1. Operations Shift Supervisor, ASA's Custodian. 2. Instrument Engineer. 3. Electrical Engineer. 4. Corrosion Engineer. 5. Telecommunication Engineer. 6. Chief Fire Officer. 7. General Work Engineer. 8. Civil Engineer 9. Safety Engineer Validity of authorization shall be one month and it should be obtained at least three days in advance and if work continues more than one month it shall be renewed before expiry. Excavations more than 1.2 meters require confined space entry authorization and gas test shall be done prior to job. Hazards of Excavation 1. Damage to underground facilities 2. Personal, vehicle, equipments and materials falling inside excavation. 3. Soil collapse due to loose soil and heavy equipment moment. 4. Presence of toxic and flammable gases. 5. Injuries due to employees working very close to each other. 6. Expose of existing building foundation. Precautions. 1. Slit trench using shovel. 2. Detection of underground facilities using metal or cable detector. 3. Trial excavation shall be carried out to ensure protection of underground facility before mechanical excavation. 4. Adapting soil protection method like stepping, sloping, shoring and close sheeting. 
5. If excavation reached more than 3 meter, shoring or close sheeting shall be done. 6. Adequate barricade and excavation signboard. 7. Gas test inside excavation before job. 8. Temporary support shall be provided for existing foundations. 9. Adequate spacing between workers. 10. Ladder shall be positioned at least 1 meter above the landing level and as excavation exceed 1.2 meter to access is required. 11. There should be at least two means of access for person working inside excavation if walking distance is more than 7.5 meter. 12. Walkways across excavations should be made by scaffolding and jumping across excavation is not allowed. 13. Excavated soil, materials, equipments shall maintain distance of 0.5 meter away from the edge of excavation. 14. If engine-driven equipments is using inside excavation, confined space conditions shall be followed. 15. Signal man shall always be present with heavy equipments like excavator, dump truck, and loader. Types of excavations 1. Manual excavation 2. Mechanical excavation Use of excavator 1. Valid Kuwait construction license is required for operator. 2. Certified signal man. 3. Hot work permit. 4. Personnel should not be inside the excavation while excavator in operation. 5. Excavator operator shall be aware from blind spot. 6. The bucket shall always be lower to ground when not in use and it should not be used other than intended use. 7. Two fire extinguisher. 8. No hydraulic leakage. 9. Valid safety certificates. Scaffolding. Scaffolding is defined as temporary platform usually constructed to perform job on higher elevation, to avoid falling of person from height. Scaffolding ratio. For mobile scaffold, 1 to 3, 1 base and 3 height. For tower scaffold, 1 to 4, 1 base and 4 height. Scaffolding components. 1. Sole plate. 2. Base plate. 3. Standards. 4. Ledgers. 5. Bracing. 6. Decking. 7. Guardrails, handrails and midrails, height approximately 1 meter. 8. Toe board should be minimum 6 inch in height. 9. Clamp C and 74 and BS 15. 10. Ladder shall be secure at 3 locations. 11. Tags either green or red tag and shall be renewed after one week. Hazards of scaffoldings. Apart from collapse the principal hazards are. 1. Unsecured ladder slipping. 2. Use of unsuitable, damage and faulty materials. 3. Inadequately supported scaffold boards. 4. Omission, removal of guard rails. 5. Not proper tie-in slash braced. 6. Overloading of platform and board. General precautions for scaffolds. 1. Competent third-part certified person is allowed for scaffolding job. 2. Cold work permit is required. 3. Employees shall be used chin straps, leather gloves and safety harness full time. 4. Tools and spanners shall be secured with body. 5. Area shall be barricaded and signs board to be displayed. 6. Non-sparking tools shall be used in hazardous area. 7. Materials, clamps shall not drop or through. 8. Leather bags shall be used for shifting. 9. While erection and modifications, red tag shall be display on height equal to eye level. 10. If height exceeding the ratio, additional tie-in with nearby existing structure shall be given. 11. Job shall be suspended in case of heavy wind and rain. 12. Dismantling start from top. 13. Scaffolding tag shall be renewed after one week and checklist shall be maintained. 14. 
ladder shall be raised at least 1 meter above landing platform and should be secure at three locations. 15. Loose materials, clamps shall not be kept unattended on working platform. General precautions for ladder safety. 1. Ladder shall be of industrial type. 2. Use the right type of ladder for the job. 3. Inspect the ladder for defect and damaged before use. 4. Independent ladder shall be tagged, validity 1 month. 5. Ladder shall be positioned at 75 angle. 6. Ladder shall be secured with clamps at 3 locations. 7. Only one person shall climb at a time and face the ladder during up and down. 8. Do not carry tools and materials while climbing. 9. Metal ladder shall not used for electrical works. Types of scaffolding. Independent tied scaffolding. Light duty. Medium duty. Heavy duty. Tower scaffolding. Stationary scaffold. Height shall not exceed 18.3 meters, 60 feet, and shall not exceed four times the minimum base ratio. Mobile scaffold, shall not exceed 12.2 meter, 40 feet, and ratio 1 to 3 and consist of caster wheels, single working platform. Caster wheel shall be minimum 12.7 centimeters 5 inch diameter with rubber, types, provided with lock and it should be lock while using. Cantilever, suspended scaffold, it is used when it is impracticable, impossible to erect standard bearing on the ground or other surface. It is type of light independent tied scaffold, which is entirely, depends upon the building or structure for support and stability. Rakers, bottom diagonal one for every standard, shall be used. The angle of rakers shall be not greater than 35. Working at height, fall prevention. Falls are leading cause of injury in all level of workplace. These are caused by slipping on surface, tripping by obstacles and while stepping off an elevated surface. Keep workplace free of obstacles and clutter. Keep walking surface clean and dry. Block, barricade the area while cleaning floors. Whip up the spills immediately or barricade the area. Report hazards on surface immediately. Avoid running cables or cords on the walkways. Use ladder safely. Ensure scaffolds are erected by competent person and follow tagging system. Wear proper footwear. Maintain adequate illumination. Do not jump from elevated surface. Floor opening shall be covered and barricaded. Don't do horseplay. Use harness if working at height. Emergency evacuation procedure. Emergency. An accident or major incident, gas leaks, fire inside refinery, because of this there is a chance of death and life threat to nearby working employees has more so in this situation all employees have to evacuate the area is called as emergency evacuation. Important telephone numbers. Emergency Dispatch Center, EDC-81111. Fire minus 888. Procedure for emergency evacuation in KNPC. Once emergency is declared KNPC control division will give siren or alarm. They're having three types of siren. First siren means alert. Second means evacuation. Third means all clear. 1. All employees should be alert and be ready once alert siren comes don't stop the job. 2. If emergency is more critical and cannot be controlled easily KNPC control room will give evacuation siren. 3. Once evacuation siren comes all employees must do following things. Stop work and secure the job. Switch off all equipments. Do not get panic. Do not run. Proceed to nearest pre-assembly point or gathering point. Wait for further instruction. If situation is more critical so as per team leader decision, instruction safety representative will send all people outside the refinery. 4. Finally KNPC control room will give all clear siren, 
If emergency situations comes under control, so all employees should get back to work but previous work permit has been suspended, executor shall have to take new permit. Questions 1. What do you mean by emergency? 2. Explain the emergency evacuation procedure. 3. As a safety in charge what you will do after hearing evacuation siren? 4. What is the emergency number and fire number in KNPC? Hand tools. The tools like hammer, chisel, screwdriver, shovel, pickaxe is comes under hand tools. Hazards of hand tools. 1. Damage handles. 2. Slipping while using. 3. Falling from height. 4. While climbing ladder carrying tools in hand. Safety precaution. 1. Inspection before using. 2. Keep clean. 3. Always keep tools in box. 4. Use proper tool for the job doing. 5. Use bucket and leather bag to shift the tools at height. 6. Follow color coding. 7. Awareness among the workers for the safe using. Interview questions. 1. Explain the type of hand tools using at site and their hazards. 2. What do you mean by color coding? Power tools. The tools which operated, run by using electric power is called as power tools like grinder, drill machine, jackhammer, wood cutting machine. Hazards. 1. Cuts and skin injuries. 2. Fire and burn injuries. 3. Electrocution. 4. Loose clothing. 5. Damage of power cables and connector. 6. Tripping hazard due to poor cable arrangement. Safety precautions, role of safety supervisor. 1. Check the permit first. 2. Color coding of power tools. 3. Power supply equipment like generator, welding machine. 4. Dead man switch functions. 5. Working area is covered with blanket or not. 6. Fires watch availability and fire extinguisher. 7. Armored cable and industrial type connector or any damage in cable. 8. Cable shall arrange properly to avoid tripping hazards. 9. Worker is not allowed to use loose clothing. Questions 1. Explain power tools in details and their safety precautions. 2. What do you mean by dead man switch? 3. Which type of cable you will use for power tools? Grinder safety. 1. Competent person shall only use grinder. 2. Dead man switch shall be functioned properly. 3. Guard is properly functioning. 4. Two types of wheels we can use with grinder, cutting wheel and grinding wheel. 5. Cutting wheel is only allowed for cutting do not do grinding using cutting wheel, chances of breaking is more. 6. RPM, revolution per minute, of wheel shall be more than grinding machine, if machine RPM exceed than wheel, it will break easily. 7. While changing wheel switch off the power supply and use gloves. 8. Face shield and leather gloves is compulsory for grinder user. 9. Deluging shall be followed while not in operation. Questions? 1. What thing you will check in grinder? 2. Explain the type of grinder wheel and what safety precaution will you take while changing the wheel? 3. What is the PPE will you use for grinding job? Hot works. Job that involves spark, source of ignition and fire comes under hot works. Example, welding, cutting, heating. Hazards. 1. Fire and burn injuries. 2. Health hazards. 3. Electrocution and electric fire. 4. Mechanical hazards. 5. Compressed gas hazards. Safety precaution slash as a safety what point we have to check. 1. Hot work permit is required. 2. Gas testing around 15 meter radius. 
3. Pool shall be 0. 4. Housekeeping or removal of all combustible material around 8 meter radius. 5. Welding booth with fire retardant tarpaulin cloth. 6. Fire watch with two fire extinguishers. 7. Inspection of welding machine and power tools used for hot work. 8. PPE like welding face shield, apron, welding gloves, and welding boots. Questions 1. Which type of permit is requires for hot work? 2. Null value for hot work? 3. What is the radius of gas testing around hot work area? 4. How many types of gases you can measure in gas monitor? 5. What is difference between multi and personnel gas monitor? 6. Explain the hazards and safety precautions. Compressed gas cylinder safety. Argon, oxygen, acetylene, gases are compressed under high pressure and can be stored inside cylinder for easy transportation and storage at working site. Hazards. Release of high pressure gas and flying like rocket if regulator, safety valve got break. Safety precautions. 1. Name of the gas and chemical formula shall be mark on the cylinder. 2. Inspection for damaged or faulty cylinder with regulators and valve. 3. Each cylinder shall have valid inspection and hydro-tested certificate. 4. Valves of the cylinder shall be protected by cap. 5. Cylinder shall always keep on trolley with chain. 6. Don't keep cylinder horizontally on ground. 7. Cylinders shall not be subjected to contact with direct flame, electric arc, molten metal, and other sources of heat, corrosive material or corrosive environment. 8. Measures shall be taken to prevent grit, dirt, oil, grease or water from entering through the cylinder valves. 9. Rusted or dented cylinders must not be used. 10. Empty and filled cylinder shall be stored slash kept differently to avoid confusion. 11. Always keep cylinder on shed. Questions. 1. Compressed gas means what? 2. What are the types of gases we are using for hot work? 3. Explain about storage and transportation of compressed gas cylinder. Gas testing. Before any hot work it is compulsory to check gas using multi-gas monitor. Multi-gas monitor can show four gases. 1. Oxygen required in between 19.5 to 23.5%. 2. Will shall be zero for hot work and 10% for cold work is allowed. 3. CO, carbon monoxide. 4. H2S, hydrogen sulfide. H2S, hydrogen sulfide. Hazards. H2S is an extremely toxic, colorless and flammable gas. H2S can be found almost anywhere in oil and gas industries but particularly in valve pits, sump pits, manholes and sewers. H2S is heavier than air hence it always stays in low-lying areas. H2S has rotten egg smell in smaller concentrations and deaden our sense of smell in higher concentrations. H2S will enter through the lungs and blocks the transfer of oxygen to the blood cells and causes paralysis of the respiratory system and fatal. TLV, threshold limit value equals 10 ppm, parts per million, for 8 hour period. Stull, short-term exposure limit equals 15 ppm for 15 minutes period. IDLH, immediately dangerous to life and health equals 33 ppm. Safety precautions. 1. Gas testing before job. 2. Gas monitor shall be calibrated after 6 months. 3. Personnel H2S gas monitor shall always used. 4. Awareness and training. 5. Emergency preparedness. Questions. 1. Define H2S and its properties. 2. Explain TLV, STL, and IDLH value for H2S. 3. Gas monitor calibration period. 4. 
hazards of H2S. 5. In case of gas leaks what you will do as a safety? Confined space. Definitions. 1. Limited entry and exit. 2. Large enough and so configured to enter bodily and perform assigned work. 3. Not designed for continuous human occupancy. Examples of confined spaces. 1. Vessel, tanks, furnaces, underground pipelines, pits and manholes, sewers and drains etc. 2. Excavation more than 1.2 meter. 3. Entry on floating roof tank when roof is 3 meter down. 4. AC dusting and large diameter pipes. Hazardous atmosphere. Means an atmosphere that may expose employees to the risk of death, incapacitation, and impairment of ability to self rescue, that is, escape unaided from a confined space, injury, or acute illness. Inert atmosphere. The atmosphere is surrounded and dispersed by nitrogen gas where oxygen level going below 5% declared as inert atmosphere. Isolation. Process by which a confined space area is isolated from service and completely protected against the release of energy and material into the space by such means as, blanking or blinding, misaligning or removing sections of lines, pipes, or ducts, a double block and bleed system, lock out or tag out of all sources of energy, or blocking or disconnecting all mechanical linkages. Line breaking. The lines carrying flammable toxic and corrosive material and inert gas that having chances of causing injuries while working on confined area need to be intentionally cut off or blinded is called as line breaking. Hazards of confined space 1. Oxygen deficiency, less than 19.5% 2. Presence of toxic, corrosive or hazardous materials, H2S hydrocarbons, NH3, sulfur and coke dust. 3. Presence of flammable, combustible, explosive or pyrophoric material, for example sludge. 4. Restricted access, limited number of entry, exit points, for example single man way. 5. Restricted to freedom of movement inside confined space, for example trays in towers and pipes in excavations. 6. Falling, tripping hazards. 7. Poor illumination, visibility, communication. 8. High temperature and humidity. 9. Electrical, static or radioactive hazards. 10. Mechanical hazards, for example tank mixers, falling objects such as tools, refractory. Safety precautions. 1. Confined space entry authorization require with permit. 2. Ensure positive isolation of vessel like line breaking or blinding. 3. Use multi lock system for electrical device if having in confined space. 4. Confined area shall be free of any combustible or inert gas by means of purging or venting. 5. Gas testing shall be carried out to ensure toxic slash flammable slash combustible gases are not present. 6. Valid confined space entry card is compulsory for worker to work inside. 7. Personnel H2S gas monitor is required with working crew. 8. Confined space attendant shall be present with CSE attendant sheet and communication device like radio. 9. Proper illumination, lighting inside confined space must be explosion proof and should be operated on 24 volt power supply. 10. Proper ventilation either through natural or fan. 11. Confined space sign board shall be displayed on entry. 12. Where appropriate PPE. Questions. 1. What are the hazards in confined space? 2. Example and definition of confined space. 3. Precautions for confined space. 4. What is isolation? 5. What is inerting? 6. What is confined space? 7. Confined space entrant and attend card validity. Crane and lifting operations.
Grains are basically used to shift, lift the heavy materials and loads from one place to another. There are basically two types of cranes. 1. Crawler crane with fixed boom. 2. Telescopic mobile cranes. Parts of crane. 1. Outrigger with spreader mates. 2. Center pin. 3. Superstructure. 4. Crane cabin. 5. Boom. 6. Main and auxiliary hook. 7. And the tube block, limit switch. Hazards of crane operations. Shifting of materials from one place to another place using crane and boom truck, rigging, is a critical work which has the following hazards. Falling of load. Hitting of load to existing facilities. Toppling of crane and boom truck. High wind speed and poor visibility. Safety precautions. 1. Soil or ground condition shall be checked and should be leveled. 2. Spread mate shall be used size 1 to 3. 3. Outrigger shall be fully extended and at least 1 meter away from manholes and trenches. 4. Do not overload, always lift up to SWL, safe working load. 5. Crane shall be used up to 75% of its capacity as per KNPC regulation. 6. Do not operate crane in high wind and raining condition. 7. Barricade the swinging radius of crane and don't allow unauthorized person except trained and certified rigger. 8. Rigger should wear jacket. 9. Only rigger is allowed to give signal to crane operator. 10. Minimum two tag lines shall be used to control swinging of load. 11. No one shall be allowed under the suspended load. 12. Straight, basket, and choker hit shall be used. 13. Crane should have reverse beep horn. What are the things we have to check in cranes? 1. Hot work permit. 2. If more than multiple cranes are using risk assessment shall be done. 3. Crane third party certificate, validity 1 year. Kuwait plate number, validity, any remarks and number of falls. 4. Operator third party and Kuwait equipment license. 5. Rigger third party and its validity, 1 year. 6. Safety certificate and fire extinguishers of crane. 7. Crane outriggers and mates. 8. Crane computer function. 9. And the tube block. Limit switch, it will stop the function of crane hook once it touches and it will prevent from hook from hitting to top boom pulley. 10. Lifting appliance like, wire rope sling, webbing sling, d-shackle, chain block, third party certificate, validity 6 month, and don't used beyond its SWL. 11. Damage and expired lifting tools and tackle shall not be used. 12. Safety latch of main and auxiliary hook. 13. Hydraulic leak of oil. 14. Cabin of crane shall be free from blind spot. 15. PPE of working crew specially leather gloves for rigor and safety harness. Questions. 1. Explain the crane parts in detail. 2. What are hazards of crane operation? 3. What points will you check in crane third party? 4. What is the crane capacity for lifting? 5. What point will you check in crane as a safety supervisor? 6. What is the use of ND tube block? 7. What is the use of tag line? Man basket safety precautions. 1. Third party certificate for man basket, slings, and master link. 2. Factor of safety for man basket and sling should be 7 to 1. 3. Any man basket activity is considered as a critical and hence risk assessment shall be done prior to job. 4. Load test shall be done by putting sandbag, related capacity load before sending of personnel every time. 5. Angle of wire rope sling to basket should be more than 45, because if angle is less, Sling of the basket will be subjected to maximum stress. 6. 
Two tag lines shall be used to control the swinging of man basket. 7. Life line shall be installed above the crane hook. 8. Inspection of all PPE before use. Equipment safety. Types of equipments used in construction site. 1. Loader. 2. Grader. 3. Excavator. 4. Concrete mixer. 5. Crane and boom trucks, dump trucks. 6. Forklift. 7. JCB, wheel loader. 8. Bobcat, compact loader. 9. Air compressor. 10. Plate slash jaw slash roller compactor. Hazards. 1. Fire. 2. Crushing or roll over. 3. Falling into excavation. General safety requirements. 1. Approved Spark Arrestor USDA marking. 2. Safety certificate validity 3 month but for new equipments it must be 6 month. 3. Fire extinguishers. 4. Third party for crane, boom truck, forklifts and air compressor. 5. Hot work permit. 6. Kuwait construction licensed with third party certified for crane, boom truck, forklift. 7. Equipment's cabin shall be free from blind spot. 8. Trained signal man. 9. 1.5D distance shall be maintained from the edge of excavation. 10. Don't allow anyone underneath the boom of equipments. 11. Prevent usage of any loose cloth B operators which may entangle with control lever of the equipment. 12. Ensure usage of rear view and side view mirrors. 13. Hydro test certificate of air receiving drum of air compressor if validity exceed 5 years. 14. Weep lash arrestor for air compressor hoses and Chicago coupling. 15. Approved air supply hose with hydro test certificate. 16. While refueling at site, switch off the engine and ensure no hot work within 15 meter radius. 17. Bonding and grounding shall be done before refueling. 18. Separate permit shall be taken for refueling of equipments. 19. For compactors check the on, off switch should be functioned properly. 20. There should not be any leakage. 21. Employee shall wear earmuff while using compactor. Electrical safety. Hazards. 1. Electric shock. 2. Heating and source of ignitions. 3. Mechanical and other hazard. Causes of hazards. 1. Faulty or damaged wiring or equipments. 2. Loose connections. 3. Use of poor quality fittings. 4. Lack of earthing, bonding and grounding. 5. Lack of protective safety devices. 6. Use of overrated fuse or jumper. 7. Working on live equipments. 8. Overloading of power sockets and equipments. 9. Water seepage or handle with wet body. 10. Poor housekeeping. 11. Handling of electrical equipments with incompetent person and lack of training awareness. 12. Lack of safe working procedure and communication. 13. Failure to use appropriate PPE and use. 14. Lack of warning signs. General safety precautions. 1. Competent and experienced person shall be allowed to do electrical jobs. 2. Don't work on live equipments, isolation and multi-lock system shall be followed. 3. Don't hang cloth or any material on electrical equipments. 4. Handling of electrical equipments or switch gear shall not be done with wet hand or body. 5. Electrical switches or access to them shall not be blocked by any material. 6. Use appropriate PPE while working on electrical equipments. Multi-lock system. Multi-lock system is used to prevent injury by accidental energizing of an equipment. While it is attended by different crafts. 1. 
the executing authority and issuing authority will jointly decide the requirement. 2. The issuing authority issues the work permit to competent electrical person to 3. Isolate the electrical equipment from substation 4. The competent electrical person and the executing authorities install their locks in the multi-lock pad as per color coding 5. Then electrical and other parties sign the section 4B of the work permit 6. Color coding of padlocks Electrical maintenance brass yellow Mechanical maintenance black Other blue 7. Each lock shall be numbered and the key shall be same number 8. After locking, the person who installs the lock is the responsible custodian of the key 9. 10. The lock shall be removed by individual craft after completion of their job 11. Electrical maintenance will have to remove lock lastly after receiving all necessary permits. Hydro testing. Definitions. The test which is carried out by using water is called as hydro test. Water is pressured by means of hand, engine pump to certain pressure and has to put the system on hold for some time to observe any leak or failure. After achieving required pressure, if it falls means having some problem in system. Purpose of hydro test 1. Identify the leaks. 2. To check the strength of welded joint. 3. To check the capacity of system. Hazards 1. Breaking, failure of line, gasket, flanges, and gauges. 2. Air entrapments inside the pipe. 3. Usage of engine operated pump. 4. Inadvertently, Suddenly increase of pressure due to underrated or non-calibrated pressure gauges. 5. Substandard support. 6. PSV failure. Safety precautions. 1. Hydro test area shall be barricaded and provide warning boards to prevent personnel entry. 2. Calibrated pressure gauges and pressure safety valves only shall be used. 3. Rating of fittings, pressure gauges, vent valves, gaskets shall be suitable for the test pressure. 4. Flanges and plates shall be as per the line class. 5. All the temporary welding shall be performed by qualified welders and approved by KNPCQA slash QC. 6. Ensure air vent provided at the highest elevation. 7. Gradual filling of lines shall be done keeping vent to open. 8. Ensure that the line is vented to remove air pockets before pressurization. 9. Pressure should be raised gradually under control to allow time for pipes to strain and time for personnel to check for leaks. 10. There shall be at least two pressure gauges, one at lowest point and another at the highest point in the system. 11. Hydro testing crew should not stay in the direction of the blind flanges to prevent injury in case of flange rapture. 12. All hoses slash piping, gaskets and connectors, clamps shall be of adequate rating to withstand pressure. 13. Whiplash arrestors shall be provided at hose connection. 14. Personnel shall not approach the system under high pressure. 15. Only essential and trained persons shall be allowed at the hydro test work location. 16. Access shall be free from any obstacle. 17. Supervisors shall be present at work location during hydro testing activities are done. 18. Risk assessment shall be done for any hydro test job. Please give comment and suggestions. Thank you. Subscribe our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon for more updates. Thank for visit our channel. See you next class. Thank you.